Good morning, folks. We've got an end to fun on the sun as it begins quieting down. We've got another big earthquake that's turned deadly. Take a look at a debris disk in the cosmos and an electric physics principle. But we begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were much calmer now that the big sunspot on the north is gone. Primary feature is the northern coronal hole coming in above some bright umbral fields. The solar flaring has been on the decline for more than a day now after that flurry of M-class flare events. We now just have the two sunspot groups on the south, right, and left. The departing group on the right retains a delta-class magnetic umbra but has yet to give us anything while facing Earth. The incoming group still hasn't directly faced Earth yet, but it is split magnetically. The middle school dance again there. Solar wind, we see the density spike noted yesterday, and then the speed ramp up indicates that it was a coronal hole stream and that it was puny. That purple bump is virtually nothing, and so the faster stream didn't bring us back to storm condition or even instability. Can't say we're out of the woods as coronal holes have been sending their wind our way for a couple days now. Of course, we've got these, CME coupling, and the Jupiter alignment this week, so even on the heels of yesterday's reported African earthquake, we were almost certain more large events were coming soon. But we didn't have to wait very long. A shallow magnitude 6.1 earthquake struck Iran. It damaged buildings and killed at least one. So let's go see how the primary model factors were in play beforehand. First, we're at the official earthquake record for this period in this location, and they've got a blot echo listed 12 hours prior to the deadly shake. Due west migration. Well, how about the atmosphere? Not only do you see a purple low-pressure earth spot darn near on the blot echo, but look at the white to the north. That's the strongest high-pressure GEC down current on the entire visible map, certainly feeding the circuit with a low below. So coming to the blot echo wind map from QuakeWatch.net, we see the colored bullseye of the deep shake and the wind vectors funneling in on the low, just to the south. Those were indeed the cause of a red alert to fall in the Middle East, even as they dwindled across the world and disappeared from South America and entirely. The quake was not directly on the fault zone, which is actually more common of a thing than you might imagine, but it did fall squarely within the colored zone, and indeed, the closest fault line to the earthquake carried the red alert. By the way, as for the forecast made before that event for timelines, we can now change those numbers to 80% and bump it back by one day to the 8th. Top article today has some pretty pictures, but also some fascinating information if you dig into it. There is a lack of symmetry that is puzzling at this stage in system formation, especially since it already had time to clear a 50 AU cavity of dust depleted space in the inner system. I'd also love to share a tier 1 info nugget that you can either discard or dig into your own rabbit hole if you wish. Collins' 1953 breakthrough is virtually undiscussed in modern academia but it is used in industry under the name electromagnetophoresis and to ascertain electromagnetic buoyancy. It states that neutral matter will be forced perpendicular to the electric current and the magnetic field that is produced, which explains the blast-out features we see with arc discharge craters and, in a more subtle effect, consider how it could influence the weather, earthquakes, and volcanoes. No time to slow down. We're over at the United States where let's all send well wishes to the storm zone residents off the convergence line towards the Gulf including Billy, who'll be driving through it today to get to Albuquerque for the conference this weekend. We do have a spot of good news for New Zealand. That storm that's over top is officially on the clock, looking to be deported around the time the sun comes up for you. Three days until observing the frontier, a few more days of seismic concern as well. We'll have the rest of your pressure and radar forecasts around the globe, a null school atmospheric chemistry run, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again here tomorrow. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.